Federico Fagan, the Italian physicist who created the world's first microprocessor, the technology that today allows all of us to use computers and smartphones. But Fagan is not just this. He is also a deep explorer of consciousness who seeks to unite physics with spirituality. I have already featured an interview with Fagan on this channel, but I decided to propose a new one, taken from the podcast Know Thyself on the Andre Ducum YouTube channel. The reason is simple. This conversation is even more complete, richer in details and nuances that I felt obliged to share with my community. For this reason, I have summarized and commented the entire interview for you to make extraordinarily profound concepts more accessible. In the description, you will find the link to the complete original interview. In this dialogue, Fagan confronts Andre, the podcast host, a young and attentive explorer of consciousness topics. The result is an illuminating conversation that touches on the fundamental questions of existence. Who are we? Who are we? What is the purpose of the universe? And what does quantum physics have to do with all this? Get ready, because what you are about to hear could radically change your way of seeing reality. If you are interested in these topics and want to support quality scientific dissemination in Italy, consider subscribing to the channel and activating the bell. The interview starts from a crucial point in Fagan's life. He was a materialist physicist, convinced that physical reality was all that exists, and that by doing everything right, he should have been happy. But he wasn't. This crisis led him to an inner search, to study neuroscience to understand what consciousness was, but without finding answers. He couldn't understand how electrical and chemical signals in the brain could create feelings. Then, one night in 1990, the event that changed everything happened. He wakes up and suddenly, a beam of energy emanates from his chest, a white and sparkling light that is pure love, joy, and peace, thousands of times more powerful than anything he had ever felt. At that moment, his consciousness finds itself within that energy, and he simultaneously becomes the observer and the observed thing. He perceives that this substance is what everything is made of. Let's stop for a moment here. This is a turning point. It is fundamental to understand that we are not talking about an intellectual intuition or a theory. Fagan describes a direct, inner, all-encompassing experience that completely overturns his materialistic worldview. It's the abysmal difference between reading the description of a taste and actually tasting it. That experience becomes for him a form of knowledge more certain than any mathematical theorem because it is a direct knowledge of self. From that moment, he decides to dedicate his life to uniting physics and spirituality. But how does Fagan define consciousness? His definition is as simple as it is powerful. Consciousness is the ability of the one, the totality of what exists, to know itself. In my opinion, this definition deserves reflection. Fagan does not speak of consciousness as a product of the brain. He describes it as a capacity, a dynamic and fundamental process of the universe itself. And he links this capacity to an intrinsic purpose, self-knowledge. The universe in this view ceases to be a cosmic accident, a blind and purposeless mechanism, and becomes an entity that has a deep desire to explore and understand itself. This desire, Fagan says, is the same craving for knowledge that drives us human beings, which gave rise to spirituality, philosophy, and science. From here, Fagan builds a theory of reality structured on three levels. The first is fundamental reality, which is described by quantum physics. This is not the world we see, but a deeper realm where there are no objects, but fields. In this level reside conscious experiences, qualia, meaning. Then there is classical reality, the world of objects that move in space and time that we perceive. This reality, according to Fagan, emerges from the deeper one. Finally, there is the body, which acts as a bridge between these two worlds. 
Our body is both a quantum and classical structure. To describe the fundamental conscious entity, Fagin introduces a new term, sate. A sate is a quantum field, like the field of an electron, but endowed with consciousness and free will. According to Fagin, we are a seat that temporarily inhabits a body to experience and learn. A personal consideration, why use a new word like seji and not simply soul? I believe Fagin does this deliberately to strip the concept of centuries of religious and philosophical superstructures that the word soul carries with it. He wants to anchor this idea to quantum physics, giving it a new theoretical basis free from previous dogmas. It is an attempt to create a language that unites science and inner experience. This brings us to another key concept, free will. For Fagin, free will is not a property of the body or the brain. The body is more like a machine, an automaton that executes programs. Free will is a property of the seit, of the conscious field that controls the body. The analogy he uses is that of an operator controlling a drone remotely. The operator has free will, the drone executes. We are the operator, our body is the drone. Oh, the extent that we completely identify with the body and act only driven by its automatisms and conditioning, our free will is limited. We truly exercise it when, as Sayyid, we intervene to make the body do something that goes against its programming. Towards the end of the interview, the conversation shifts to the future of humanity, and here Fagin presents us with a crucial choice, service to self versus service to others. The first path is that of competition, where each individual acts only for their own benefit. The second is that of cooperation. Fagin points out how biology itself is a miracle of cooperation. 50 trillion cells cooperate to form our body. If humanity does not learn to cooperate, recognizing that we are all interconnected, it is destined for self-destruction. In conclusion, what does this extraordinary interview leave us with? It leaves us with a vision of reality radically different from the materialistic one. We have seen how Fagin, starting from a personal crisis, arrived at a theory in which consciousness is the fundamental fabric of the universe. A universe that has a purpose, to know itself through infinite conscious entities, the seeds, which are us. But beyond the theory, the message that, in my opinion, comes across most strongly is an invitation to take responsibility for our existence and our happiness. It is an invitation to look within ourselves, to value our inner experiences, because there and not outside is where the deepest knowledge is found. It is a message of hope, telling us that we are not biological machines in a meaningless universe, but active participants, creators of meaning, eternal beings on a journey of discovery that never ends. And this brings me to the question for you. What do you think? Does this vision of reality resonate with you? Let me know in the comments. I'm very interested in reading your thoughts. If you liked the video, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and share this content with whoever you think might appreciate it. Thank you, and see you next time.